said. Let's praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Surely he's worthy. Keep going. Keep going. I love it. God loves it even more. Keep praising him. Hallelujah, God. We praise you. We magnify you. We extol you. We give your name all the glory, honor, and the praise because you do it. Regardless of our feelings, regardless of our own personal emotions, God, we set our minds. We set our affections, Lord God, on you, the author and finisher of our faith, the one who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ever ask or think, the one who decided that we could have another chance at life, the one who provided us with new grace, new mercy, not recycled, not repurchased, but brand new because he's great and rich in mercy. We thank you, God. Thank you because somebody doesn't have the testimony that we have today, the ability to come into your house, to come into your presence and lift our hands and extol you, God. Somebody wishes they could be in this position, but here we are, and we are going to take advantage of this opportunity. In the name of Jesus, we desire that you desire for us to do whatever it is that you desire for us to do, God. Pray that you're pleased with our praise. We pray that you're pleased with our praise. Father, we desire to encounter the supernatural today. The supernatural. Touch down. Reach down from heaven. Let us experience you. Reach down from heaven. Let us feel you. Somebody needs to hear your voice. Somebody's looking for direction, for clarity today. I pray that you would speak in your atmosphere. Somebody needs a healing, God. I pray that you would touch in your atmosphere. Ah. So somebody needs a turnaround, a, a shando in their life. I pray that you would come in and do the miraculous today. But Father, we know that if our faith field expectation is toward you, then you move. You move by our faith. So heighten us today. Heighten our faith today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Move right now, God. God, heart to heart, up. breast to breast. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you. I pray that as individuals walk into the room, yes, there's a shifting. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. I pray that right now in the pews, you, there will be a shifting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. Somebody yeah. came in with funky thoughts. Thank you, Jesus. Shift. Thank you, Lord. Somebody came in with a hard heart. Shift. You, Somebody set in, settled in today with unforgiveness. Shift. We stand in expectation of all you're going to do today, God. And we don't doubt you for nothing. Because you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. Father, we love you. We honor you, God. And we count it as up from here. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. All of God's children said amen. Celebrate them all over the room. Celebrate God here. Come on, give him a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's truly worthy to be praised, isn't he? In spite of it all, he is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you came to lift the name of Jesus on today? How many of you came to lift the name of Jesus on today? For he is worthy. Come on, put your hands together like this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. we 
shout your name. Receive our praises. Receive our praises as we love on you. Receive our love. Receive our love. Hallelujah. And as we shout your name, receive our praises. Receive our praises. Because your name.
after me. Coming after me. He keeps coming after me. Coming after me. today if you haven't felt his love pursue you you know what the writer intended in this song you know what they meant to have his love chase after you in yeah. spite of your backsliding in spite of your inconsistencies in yeah. spite of your hangups that he still yeah. calls you son he still calls you daughter that love, that love is unmatched. That love is like no other. That love is agape love. That love is crazy love. And I thank God that he's crazy about me. Anybody thank God that he's crazy about you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, Holy Spirit, have your way. Continue to move in our hearts today. Continue to have your way in this service today. Flood our souls with your presence that you may be lifted, that you may be uh, exalted and more men and women may be drawn closer to you more boys and girls may be drawn closer to you oh God uh, that we may have intimacy that we may have communion that me, we may have fellowship with you today it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray and my brothers and sisters say amen come on let's give God a hand clap of praise Y'all give it up for Elder Brantley teaching such a powerful word last week under new management. I went back and watched the replay, and that was a powerful message under new management. I pray that this series is blessing you, and it's also helping you to manage your heart 
or make sure your heart is under the right management, that you will love the way God loves. For we see through the word of God that love is important. Love matters. How you treat others matters. Amen. What you do with your heart matters uh, to God. And so we want to be his disciples. We want to do what he would have us to do, not what our flesh wants to do or what the culture suggests. Uh, and today, I just before I get in the word, man, I got to thank my brother, Brother Phil Jones, one of Cleveland's greats. Y'all, if, you, if you're not into the music scene of Cleveland, you have no idea what's sitting over there. But this is one of the greatest musicians uh, in the Cleveland area, and he came through for us today. Uh, so I love you, brother. Good to see you, man. We got one for the books. We got one for the books. <laughs> uh, Co-pastoring uh, his father's church and flying back and forth from Texas, correct? So he was in town. And we needed we needed another musician this weekend, and so grateful that he is he is with us today. Uh, also, too, fellas, there is, I've been trying to get the word out. Uh, there is a men's gathering that New Community Fellowship is having in Cleveland Heights this Saturday. If you are interested in going, it's $10. They'll be serving food. There'll be entertainment there and games and stuff. But it's, it's to bring men together and encourage brothers in Christ. So if that's something that you might be interested in, see me after church, and I'll be glad to, to give you uh, any further detail that you may need. Amen. If you have your Bibles, oh yes, the kids, go ahead. Y'all can go ahead with Sister Trinita for those that are practicing for our program next Sunday. Amen. If you have your Bibles, Luke, the seventh chapter. the 11th verse, and if you are able, please stand for the reading of God's word, Luke, the 7th chapter. Starting at the 11th verse. Luke 7, verse 11, if you got to say amen. And I'll be reading from the King James Version, and it reads, And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he had came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, that is, the basket. Uh, and they that bare him stood still, and, and he said, Young man, and I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. There came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen among us, and that God has visited his people. Now, I want to preach from a subject this morning, a heart for someone else. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Matthew, the 22nd chapter, the 37th through the 39th verse, we have lifted up this scripture many times this series because it's so befitting and it said Jesus said unto them thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind this is the first and great commandment but then verse 39 says and the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself it seems like sometimes that, that second great commandment gets uh, omitted. <laughs> but, but when you look at that scripture in plain text, it simply says that you ought to treat others how you want to be treated. Or you ought to treat others like you treat yourself. 
that if you like to eat a certain meal, you ought to give others the meal you like to eat. Don't give them that nasty stuff that you don't want to eat. Don't give them something you don't want to wear. Don't treat them in a way you don't want to be treated. Simply love your neighbor as yourself. That, that, that means that how we handle one another ought to be tailored or filtered through love. Mm -hmm. Filtered through love. John 15 and 12 says, this is my commandment, that ye love, somebody say, one another. Man, listen, if we were to, to master all the one another's in the Bible, the way we master all the blessings and the promises, we would see more blessings and promises. You hear what I'm saying? One another. If you, if you just, we mastered the one another's, Dr. Yvonne, we'd be all right. It says, love one another as I have loved you. He is the standard. He's saying, love me the way, love other people the way I've loved you. When I died for you, you was a sinner, meaning you were something, uh, 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 we, we were at odds. There were enmity. There wasn't harmony between us. But yet, I loved you, meaning you don't wait till somebody become your BFF to show them love. You don't wait till somebody be, uh, becomes a fitting of a preference. It's a love that's not earned. It's a love that's not earned. No one has to prove to you anything for you to love them the way God has told us to love one another. Ooh, I know y'all don't like that. Yes, yes, you have to give your heart to God and be vulnerable to strangers, to enemies, to people who you don't know. You know close friends, distant friends, funny acting friends, but you still have to love them. Why? Because you will be held accountable for how you treat other people. Yeah, yeah, I know we like to get in our feelings and... And get your, I've been there too. And, and, and what you're not going to do. No, 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 no. What does the Bible say you should do? The Bible should have the final say. That love maintains fellowship. Love maintains. Remember I said that reconciliation is the necessary maintenance of relationship. That was from Bible study. Reconciliation is the necessary maintenance. Why? Because at some point, you and somebody going to fall out. That's life. I don't care who you cool with and where, where, how long y'all been friends. At some point, something might be said that you don't agree with or you don't like. Or you might say something because you ain't that perfect. <laughs> that, that, that they don't like. Amen. And reconciliation and is the maintenance to relationships it keeps things going that's how folks can celebrate 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 years of marriage it ain't because they ain't never had an issue they have mastered dealing with issues they love, eno lo love each other enough to allow God to have the final say mm. first Peter 4 and 8 says above all things have fervent charity among yourselves for charity shall cover the multitude of sins once again love maintains fellowship and I know there's a lot of things we need in the world today and it may sound cliche -ish, but one of the things we really need is love love here in this text Jesus models for us having a heart for someone else Meaning that we have to uh, be willing to put ourselves in other people's situations. And be willing to love them enough through their difficult time. Be willing to not just pray, but sometimes you are the answered prayer. Sometimes it ain't for you to pray. It's for you to do. <laughs> let's let's get into text let's get into text the jesus has just healed a ruler's servant and the, and 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 the servant the ruler had had called on jesus and this is this is luke 7 through 11 7 through 10 uh, of the seventh chapter i'm sorry 
1 through 10 of the 7th chapter, and he, he's, he's reached out uh, to, to, to Jesus to heal his servant. He wanted his servant to be healed, but he didn't feel he was worthy enough for Jesus to come to his house. So because he didn't feel worthy enough for Jesus to come to his house, he said, I know you got the power to just say the word and my servant will be healed. And so he had sent his messengers to give this message to Jesus. And by the time his messengers got back to the house, the servant was healed. I believe it was at the same time that Jesus spoke and said, told, they told, listen, I've never seen a faith so great. But there's a difference. This ruler cried out and requested Jesus, but this mother never asked for Jesus. Keep that in mind. Let's look at the text here. And it came to pass, you got to understand what, what's going on. It came to pass that they went into, that he went into a city called Nain. This is after he has healed the servant. And many of his disciples went with him and much people. So you've got the disciples and thousands of people following Jesus. There's a crowd because of the miracles he's performing. Yeah, people will follow anybody that can can benefit their well-being. <laughs> They'll hang around. <laughs> they hang around. You ever, if you ever have money on you, you know what I'm talking about. I, I'm going with you. I bet you you are because you ain't got no <laughs> you ain't got no money. You can't get rid of you. Uh, th th this crowd, this is a large crowd. Now, they're going to the city, okay? Now, verse 12, now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. He's going to the city. There's another crowd with the mother. They're going to the cemetery. One crowd has just experienced a miracle. The other crowd is mourning a death. What we see here is two crowds coming together, and one crowd has what the other crowd needs. Keep living long enough, one day you're going to find yourself in both of these crowds. One day you're going to be coming to the city, and one day you're going to be going to the cemetery. <laughs> one one day you're gonna somebody you're gonna be coming from an experience a high moment experience of God doing miracles and then one day you might need somebody to tell you he's a miracle worker. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just need you to know that sometimes you got what the mourners need. You may not have the power, but you got a testimony yes, that can tell somebody. Listen, I. I know how you feel. And you know, you know what's a blessing? When you've been with the mourners and you get back to the miracle and say, hey, but God brought me out, he can bring you out. This, this, woman, this, this woman here uh, uh, is going through a lot. And you've got to look at the text and see how much pain she is going through. Because the, the text says that they carried out a dead man, right? It was her only son. And she was a widow. Meaning that this is her second funeral. She lost her husband. She doesn't have a husband. And her son wasn't a boy. He was a young man. Meaning more than likely he was the provider. Why? Because in Jesus' day, uh, the men were the ones who carried the, f the financial responsibilities of the family. And family was everything in those days. There, was, there, was, there wasn't even no such thing as blended family. They stuck together. <laughs> they, they, they were together. Here, she's losing her protector. She's losing her provider. And now she doesn't even have a companion. She's going through a lot. Being that she's probably financially strapped, doesn't have the support uh, uh, that, that she probably needs, more than likely she prepared her own son for his burial. It was customary for, for family members to lay their dead on the floor of their living room and 
groom their hair and put on their best to prepare them for the processional. And they would hire mourners sometimes to come alongside and grieve with those who are mourning. This woman has been through a lot. That's why it's important that we have the posture of love because when you meet somebody, you don't know what storm they're dealing with. You don't know what adversity they're going through. You don't know what private battle they're fighting. That's why the best posture to always have is love. You don't know what people are dealing with, and, and, and you don't want, just because somebody got money don't mean they ain't got problems, and just because somebody's successful don't mean they ain't got problems, and you, you know, you can't tell, what I'm saying is you can't tell from the outside, treat everybody like a human being and just love them. You know, sometimes we go, oh, they, they can't have no problems, they got everything. You don't, you don't know what LeBron James is going through, yeah, he got a lot of money, but you don't know what he's going through mentally. He may need this crowd that was coming to the city. You can't just judge on the outside, amen. And can you imagine, you know how it feels sometimes when you're going through a private storm and some people do some of the most ignorant stuff. You're going through a lot. You mean you're going to do this to me today? Not, not today. <laughs> I ain't got it today. Always make sure that you have the right, you have the right disposition in your heart especially if you've been walking with the crowd that's experienced the miracle it may be your season for favor and bless breakthrough and open doors uh, make sure you can share that joy and that faith with somebody else amen she's probably also dealing with guilt she's trying to understand why is it not now she's lost her husband why is it, I mean, that she's lost her son, being that she lost, is this punishment? Because in the Jewish culture, when something like this happened, they would say, uh, it's because you're a sinner. Yeah. This, it, you brought this on yourself. You was out there trying to do stuff you shouldn't have been doing in the world, sinning. Remember the blind man? They wanted to know, how, why was he blind? What, what did his parents do? Remember? Yeah, I remember that. So what did his parents do that this, this joker blind? Y'all, what y'all do? Y'all, something y'all did. No, God said, no, he's not blind because of his parents' sin. It's for God's glory. Because one day he would meet the greatest healer to show you his glory. Uh, this, she's, dealing, she's dealing with guilt. She's dealing with heaviness. And here we have to feel what they feel. It says here in verse 13, and when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. And said unto her, weep not. We have to feel what people feel. And I know that that's not a blanket statement because some of us are wired differently. We just don't feel what other people feel. Some of us, not that we don't care, we just, yeah, I'm going to be all right. <laughs> but the, the word compassion means that he had a loving concern. He had a loving concern for this woman, and he wanted to alleviate her pain. See, when we feel what people feel, there's something inside us that says, what can I do to help this person? That's the type of love we have to have, even with a stranger, that if we see that they're going through an affliction and we have the power to make a change or make a difference, that we should be seeking, how can I alleviate this person's adversity? What can I do to get into their situation? And his, his heart went out to her. And what I love about this text, it doesn't say she knew who Jesus was. It doesn't even say she was a believer. It doesn't say she asked and cried out to Jesus. Jesus saw her. Now, now, now y'all know who Jesus is. Yeah, you should cry out, but God doesn't have to uh, uh, just move when you cry out. He can move when he get ready to move because he's God. Huh? What am I saying is that sometimes you ought to help people without them asking you. If you had, listen, how, how, she's in a crowd. She's probably got five, seven hundred some people with her. Jesus has thousands. But he doesn't lose sight of her heart. Why is it that Jesus could see her the way he saw her because of the condition of his heart? 
See, some people had been had thousands behind them that had been like, come, pay attention. I'm about to do something miraculous. Book deals is about to come. A documentary deal is about to come. Uh, about to get more, more followers on TikTok and Twitter and Instagram. Uh, come, 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 pay attention and see as I lay hands on this coffin. <laughs> no, but his heart, he saw her. Hey, the, the crazy thing about this text, Elder Brantley, is that it ain't even about the dead boy. <laughs> the whole text is about his compassion for the widow. I mean, not that we be little and that, that my homie died. We're not, we not saying that that don't matter, but the text is really about a woman who probably was an unbeliever, but Jesus had compassion on her. Which that ought to give y'all some a little encouragement because if he had compassion on somebody he did, who didn't cry out, how much compassion would he have on you when you cry out and your son and daughter, you're an heir of the kingdom, you're joint heirs with Christ. Woo, goodness. How much more? Remember that? Remember we talked about how much more for your father in heaven? Here, he sees her. He sees her. He has compassion on her. Uh, we got to see people. We have to see people not with our natural, but with our spiritual. We have to be able to discern and get past the facade that I'm okay. Oh, let's, let's, let's try this again. You're not okay. <laughs> Especially the people that I know. Y'all can't you try with somebody else. Don't even try it with me. If I know you, it's a wrap. Once we connect as family, as brothers and sisters in Christ, and we have relationship, I know. I've, uh, come on, come on, let's have a seat. Let's sit down, let's talk. Uh, that, that's what some people need. Some people would have not committed suicide if somebody would have just saw them. Somebody probably wouldn't have committed that crime if somebody just would have saw them. That little boy probably wouldn't have did what he did if somebody would have saw him. Say, hey, come here. Come here. Sit down. Let's talk. Let's talk. He sees. He sees, right? He sees her. And what does he say unto her? Weep not. Today's psychology would tell us not to tell someone how to feel. Right? Don't tell nobody. You, 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 you let them be and let them process it how they have to process it. But when my daughter scrapes her knee and she begins to cry, I tell her it's going to be what? All right, because I have the power to make her feel better. You know what it's called? A boo-boo kiss. And once I kiss the boo-boo, Jesus tells her to weep not because he has the power. <laughs> huh? He said, I can handle this level that you don't know nothing about. Huh? I, I was, I was uh, doing another sermon, and this, this principle applies here as well. You know, Jesus told the disciples, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Why? Because in me is the power to sustain your broken heart. In me is the power to sustain your weariness. It's in me. I, I, I'm used to this level. I've dealt with death. My son, my son who's three years old, has a love for, for Mario Brothers on the Nintendo Switch. Now, I bought the Nintendo Switch for Naya and Caleb, but Naya kind of ball hogged it, and she hogged it up, and uh, Caleb really don't get to play it, but J.D. don't care. He's going to take that Nintendo Switch, and he's going to play Mario Brothers. The, 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 the frustrating thing about this is that he doesn't know what he's doing. So he gets the Nintendo Switch, and he just, now he's gaining some understanding to jump over the mushroom men and jump over the turtle, but his timing and his hand eye coordination is not there and what happens he runs right into them instead of jumping over them and he dies and he falls out has a tantrum 
I say, son, <laughs> son, <laughs> give daddy <laughs> the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> because daddy has played on this level before. <laughs> Not only have I played on this level before, but I'm skilled. <laughs> I already know what the enemy is going to do because I've been on this board before. But in order for me to help Jaden, Jaden has to put the Nintendo Switch in my hand. I hear somebody, uh, 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 when when he tells you to weep not, it's because he has dealt with the level you're on. He has the hand-eyed coordination. He knows what the enemy is going to do. He says, weep not, baby. I done beat the whole game. Weep not. I done got him from the grave. So whatever you're dealing with, I, I got the skills. Uh, we tell it somebody, we not because we know a gamer that has beat every level. And he ever liveth. He ever liveth to make intercession. Do I got a witness in here? Do I got a witness that he's able to keep you? Do I got a witness that he's able to sustain you? Reason why I'm asking is because when somebody tell you something that's heavy, you've got to have faith to say, but our God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. You got to be able to come into a hospital room and say, God's still going to heal. You got to be able to come into a living room and say, this marriage is going to be restored. You got to be able to come into somebody's house and say, he's still a provider. Weep not, somebody shout, weep not. we see people hurting, do they know Mr. Weep Not? Do they know him? If you don't know him, let me, let me call, let me call you, call him on the phone for you because he's always on the main line. Uh, Father, Father God, right now I have my brother here. He doesn't know you, but I know you. And I, I need you to do something for him only that you can do. One second, one second. I need for you to, to be able to do a miracle. God, if it be your will, Heavenly Father. Huh? You got to talk to the one that helped you. you huh? You got a heart for someone else. You're not going to withhold the antidote. I wonder about people that got the power to help people and don't. That, that's, that's a whole nother different type of person there. You have the the ability, the power, the knowledge, and you won't help. Here, Jesus shows that we have to have compassion for people that don't know us, people that won't request it. And what does he do? He, he, He takes his weep not, and now he puts action behind it. Hmm? God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He put action behind it. Action. If we're going to have compassion, sometimes we got to get dirty. If we're going to have compassion, we're going to have to go somewhere we didn't want to go. We're going to have to give up some time, give up some money, give up some knowledge. Amen. And he says here, verse 14, and he came and he touched the bear. What did he touch? The coffin. This this is during the time of the Jews. What he did was override it cultural and social norms in order to meet the need of somebody else. What are you saying, Pastor? If you don't know, for a person in the Jews' day to touch a coffin or touch a dead body would make them ceremonially unclean and they would have to quarantine for seven days. You hear what I'm saying? Jesus walks up. <laughs> Ain't about that. Somebody needs to be loved. Are you willing to go against the culture 
and still love your enemy, don't everybody know what your enemy done did? Are you willing to go against the culture and love somebody that, every, that everybody else say you should hate? Uh, maybe you got to go against yourself. <laughs> that friction. I really don't want to love you. <laughs> oh, Jesus. But, but here, Christ shows us that he overrides social norms in order to meet a need. Sometimes love will have people looking at you like, like you crazy. What you mean? What you mean you're going to be there for this person and that person after the day? <laughs> people who are current of mind, they can't understand spiritual things. We, we are uh, loyal to a kingdom <laughs> that's not of this world. I have dual citizenship. I'm American and I'm a Christian. Yeah. And so my Christianity overrides my African Americanism. <laughs> and I allow God to have the final say in these situ intimate situations. Amen. Here, here he touches, he touches the coffin. He touches the coffin and he very simply, very simply he speaks and says, young man, I say unto thee, arise. Verse 16 says, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 15 says, and he that was dead sat up and began to speak and he delivered him to his mother. Imagine the emotional shift that happened in her life that day. Oh, she didn't cry out to Jesus that day, but I bet you she's going to cry out to him afterwards. Can you imagine her in her living room grooming her son, dead body, anointing him in an, an ointment, putting on his best clothes, and the, the pallbearers coming in and picking up the basket? walking all to get to the gate and a man she doesn't know touches the casket and gives her back to her I don't care what no one else thought about Jesus that day one thing they knew is that God visited them the evidence was too strong it was too it's too powerful <laughs> Especially for this widower who now had her son back. Who now had her provider back. Who now had her companion back. The evidence of Jesus was too strong. That, what I'm saying is that I, I, I know we may not touch a coffin and make a dead person rise out of there, which I don't doubt can happen. God is able. Who knows what he'll do before he comes back. I'll never put God in a box. But what I will say is that our love has to be so strong that the result is undeniable that God was working through us. That our love has to be so real that we leave a receipt to say God was here. <laughs> our love has to be so powerful that there's evidence that God's fingerprints is on the situation. The people say, listen, <laughs> that was God. Nobody else but God could have told them that we didn't have any food and they just brought groceries out of nowhere. That was God. I never talked to them. I never told them. That, that was God for you to call me when you did. I had the gun in my lap. That was God. That was God when you did that. That was God for you to do what you did. We, we, we have to stay in tune with God. And may the, when God is on the situation, the evidence is undeniable. The evidence is undeniable. Here, he begins to speak. He, he delivers. He delivers him to his mother. And what do the people do? Verse 16, as I close. And fear, not, not the type of fear that we think of when we see, hear the word fear, but awe, reverence, fell on the people. And they what? Glorify God. Saying, 
that a great prophet is risen among us and that God has visited his people. Everything we do should be to glorify God. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, and, and I'm, hmm. you know, we, we, we shouldn't do things to be seen or applauded. It's like, if you've got to do this while you, <laughs> and, and, I'm, and I'm not saying that every person that takes a picture of what they're doing is, is trying to fulfill self-fulfillment. I'm not saying, I don't know, because I don't know their heart. But I know if I was homeless, I don't want nobody taking a picture of you giving me food. Like, let me get my food in peace. Like, <laughs> I'm already ashamed that I got to get this food this way. Like, don't take a picture of it. Like, I'm, I'm already a little embarrassed I'm in the hospital. Like, don't take a picture of me in the hospital. I mean, unless I tell you. Am I making sense? It, it is just for God to be glorified. But God is not going to be glorified by love that never leaves your heart. He's never going to be glorified by what you were going to do. He's only glorified in the deeds. So I ask you this, who have you loved? Who have you loved in spite of their situation? Who have you loved that could never repay you? Who have you loved that has wronged you? You know, the Bible says easy to love people that's your family. You say, what's that? Even the wicked do that. They love on their family. Well, what about your enemies? Mm, 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 mm. That's, that's, that's when you find out how much Jesus you got in your heart. When you got every right to knock their top off, but you'd rather pray. You know you need to pray. You know you need to intercede. Bless them that curse you. Pray for them that persecute you. Oh, but when you meet it, that's freedom. From the depths of your heart. From the depths of your heart. When you mean it, that's liberty. Why? Because you don't allow the grudge to control you. You don't allow the situation to dictate your actions. But you stay, you stay in the vein that he would have you to be in. Amen. And continue to love. I challenge you this week to love on purpose. I challenge you this week to have a heart for somebody else. I challenge you to use God's love with your eyes and see. Some of y'all ain't got to go that far. Maybe y'all start at home. Who do you need to love at home? You've been living with them, but have you been loving them? Look, look with God's eyes and see where you could be a blessing to somebody else this week. Be, be, be more like Christ. Do what Christ would do. Amen? Maybe it's pay for somebody's meal. Maybe it's to help a lady get the water on her cart. Maybe it's to shovel a neighbor's driveway. Because, you know, your neighbor is whoever you can touch. Your neighbor is whoever you, can, whoever you have in your reach. And may, maybe it's to go and help somebody do something. But love, the greatest commandment of all is to love. I, I know I know that sometimes we 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 kind of overlook this this principle, but even in First Corinthians thirteen, it says you can prophesy, you can have faith, you can sacrifice your body, you can uh, uh, know all the mysteries of God, and you can do all these things. But if you have don't, if you don't have love, if I'm preaching up here without love, this means nothing. You understand what I'm saying? Love is important. Love matters. And make sure you have a heart for someone else. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise this morning. I understand. You may not be ready to love. <laughs> but I pray that your mind and your heart is going in this direction to allow him to manage your heart as, as Elder, Elder Brantley so eloquently preached last week let your heart be under his management meaning let him dictate how you love others let him dictate how you treat others amen near and far let him and, and when you do that he is glorified 
What did it say? What did it say? Honor your father in heaven. Uh, do, I'm sorry, I can't think of the scripture. Yeah. Uh, uh, I can't think of the scripture, but, but by our good works, we glorify our father in heaven. I can't think of the scripture right now. I'm sorry I'm having a mental block, but y'all know what I mean. Make sure that he gets the glory out of everything you do. And it really, yeah, let your good works say it. Be seen so that men may glorify your Father which is in heaven. Thank you, Dr. Yvonne. Works, not intent. It's something you have to do. Works. So I challenge you, works. Do some works this week. Love on somebody this week. As we all stand on our feet, there may be someone here who doesn't know Christ as their personal Savior. Maybe you're in a backslidden condition. Maybe you don't have a church home. We'll be glad to welcome you here. Or maybe you say, hey, pastor, my heart has been hard. My heart has been hard, and I've been doing what I want to do with my heart. I've been treating people the way I want to treat them. But today I realize that I even have to let, allow Christ to be Lord of my heart. Not just Lord of, 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 of my identity, not just Lord of my pride, but I have to allow him to be Lord of my heart as well. And so today I want to surrender my heart to him more so that I can forgive, so that I can love so that I can have compassion so the Holy Spirit can use me to meet someone else's need so the Holy Spirit can use me to love on somebody that needs to be loved not just with words but with action if that's you today the doors of the church is open we'll be glad to encourage you pray for you if, if you don't want anyone to touch you due to COVID we understand you can just come and stand before the altar but if there's one today Jesus is waiting for you hallelujah Jesus is waiting for you. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. If there if there is another today, if there's another today, Jesus is waiting for you. I get it. It's it's one of those messages. You know, when I preach accountability, the altar is usually <laughs> Preach, you preach account what, what, what you have to do. It, it'd be a little thin up at the altar. But I'm here to tell you that it's better to be found in his will and what you're accountable to than to be outside. There's blessings in being obedient and being responsible with your faith. He all right. He all right. Is there another this morning that needs to surrender their heart to him today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. The altar is still open. You can still come down. If you feel the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart, don't, don't, don't quench the Holy Spirit. If you feel him tugging at your heart, come while you still have breath in your lungs come while you're alive amen I was just talking with my older brother and yesterday we was talking about how people take it for granted that you just open your eyes another day so many people are passing away and they sleep close their eyes and never get up again and while you still got breath in your lungs you better do right do right by God don't, don't wait till tomorrow do it today
the time and altar call, but remember that the God that we pray to is everywhere at the same time. And so don't confine your prayers to this room. But you can start calling out names of individuals who aren't even here. People that you know need to have a softened heart, an open mind to the compassion and the love of Jesus Christ. You can start calling those names out now. Co-workers. People that you go to school with. People that you know from the neighborhood. People that you grew up with. Call those names out. That they would experience the same love that you know. A very, a very sad truth about this message that Pastor Judah preached is that sometimes it takes calamity or some type of turmoil for people to even determine that God loves them as much as they do, as he does, or to even share that type of compassion with anybody else. It's like after the car accident, because God spared my life now, you know, I'm ready to love on. Or, or, or because that, you know, that gun didn't pop when dude pulled the trigger. Now I'm ready to love. I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray that you've got your intercession hat on today. I, this is a, this is a big message, man. That this is a heavy, a heavy word that needs to hear. Everybody needs it. Everybody needs it. It's, it's like I wish the platform was bigger. Because this is a word that everybody needs to hear. But intercession can reach worldwide. Start speaking those names. Seriously, start speaking those names. We all know somebody with that tough heart that, that just can't be penetrated. And you don't want calamity. You don't want a near miss or, 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 a, or a threat at life to be the reason why somebody begins to show a heart for somebody else. Pray, pray now. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise this morning. I pray, did this, did this bless you this morning? Did that bless you this morning, having a heart for someone else? to close we also want to take a time to give if there's anyone that desires to give you can do so via cash app that's dollar sign mt hebron uh, 216 or you can also click on the push pay link in the comments on our live feed you can give that way or if you have cash you can also put in the basket it's, you can come now we don't have no format formal way of giving if you just have something you can come and bring it up 
But we thank you for every seed that is a sown, that God will continue to bring resources in this house, that we may continue to have the finances and the means to do the ministry he would have us to do. So excited to, I was so excited to hear about the women who were able to come out yesterday for the Women's Fellowship. Shout out to Sister Amber for, for pushing. I know we, we Amber got pushed back after pushback. I mean, you've been trying to meet with these women probably like almost a year and a half now. If it ain't the weather, it's COVID. If it ain't the COVID, it's weather. It's something. But I, I thank God that you all were able to come together. And I could tell from just the aura on my wife that it was uplifting. Uh, so God bless you all and continue to let's continue to fellowship and also men if you want to meet uh, go with us this Saturday I know I got a handful of us going uh, once again it is a men's fellowship it's at 8 30 this Saturday yeah this Saturday coming up uh, ten dollars oh the ten dollars is at the door yep you give the ten dollars at the door so I know I got a handful of us that are coming if you also want to join meet me after church and I'll be glad to give you further details if all hearts and minds are clear, I'm going to first, I'm going to pray over the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for every seed. Thank you for every cash app, God. Thank you that you, you choose to bless our house, Lord, that we're able to keep the lights on. We're able to keep the heat on, able to have the means to still do ministry in this building in the midst of a pandemic. And Lord, we pray that you bless every sower and that you will continue to keep seed in their hand, bless their finances, Lord, and we stand on your promises that if we give as you have directed us to give cheerfully and bountifully, we shall be blessed. It's in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed, and my brothers and sisters say amen. 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 God bless you. Let's stand on our feet and get ready to be dismissed. I'm going to ask Mama Connie to close us out in prayer today. Come on, Mama. What you Folk, hey, folks be coming up like they about to get a million dollars. If I have any visitors here, I try my best to push our members because I don't want this church to be pastorally driven. I want it to be lay driven. It, it's not about me. You understand what I'm saying? If it's just about me, we're, we're, it's done before it starts because I'm only one person. I am not the church. I am the pastor. The church. If I'm the only one teaching, that's, if I'm the only one serving, that's, that's a weak church. That's what it is. And God has equipped each and every one of us to serve in some capacity to be able to add to the kingdom and the work he have us to do here. So I like to do things like this just to get us out of our comfort zones. You know, who knows? Maybe we might give a million dollars one day, you know. Shout out to Mike Tyler. This one ain't got enough sanit sanitization on it. It was dry. It was in the loader bar. <laughs> you like my new word? Thank you, God, that you brought me out today. And I just want to say a little something on Pastor Message. Like, I am the oldest. Of, my father has nine children, and I'm the oldest by five different women. We never had a relationship, and he had ended up with dementia, and I've been going back and forth to the hospital just being there for him and the kids. And this, he, what he preached today is wow. Wow. It's just right there. And I had... I've been back and forth to the hospital just getting more so being there for the other ones, you know, and I'm thanking God. Okay. Thank you, God, for letting me be here this morning just to hear this message.
keep us, Lord, for the week. Bless us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God, just for everything. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for Pastor, First Lady. Let us make it home safely yes, sir. and come back even stronger than we were. Yeah. yeah. And take this message home because we just got to love through it all. That's right. That's right. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Keep us. Amen. Amen. So proud of Mama Connie. And as you get as you leave out, I didn't say much about it, but if you keep my son lifted in prayer, some of y'all saw First Lady's post. He had a he had his first real sickle cell crisis. Uh, he was up screaming and shouting from midnight to seven this morning. So just keep keep my wife, keep us lifted in prayer. We appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>